Hi, I'm Tony, and today we're running through Sports Bike Shop's top five racing helmets. A helmet for racing or for track use has a quite specific set of requirements. We want stability at higher speeds, we want good peripheral vision in both the vertical and the horizontal plane, and we want as much cooling airflow as we can get. Protection also needs to be a big consideration as you're more likely to crash on track, and then you'll need that helmet to perform its primary safety function. The following five helmets are all designed for racing, but they're also approved for road use. You won't find so many practical road features or convenient things on this helmet as you'd get on a dedicated road lid. Quick release buckles are out, sun visors are out. Comfort over long distance is less important than a snug fit and being quiet is also lower down the designer's priority list with a race helmet as well. With some of these, you'll struggle to attach the module for an intercom as well. Now, just as you don't have to stick to racing or track while wearing these lids, you don't have to have top end helmets like these if you are hitting the track. Any helmet with an ACU gold sticker can be worn on track, but these five helmets represent the pinnacle of what is currently available for racing and track use. Now, I've worn all five of these helmets on both track and road to get a good view of each lid, so let's get into the helmets. Arai have a long-standing reputation in racing and this RX7V Evo carries on that tradition really well. This helmet isn't fundamentally different in shape to RX7s from the 1990s and there's a very good reason for that. Arai believe this simple rounded shell shape is the safest and they're not going to compromise on that for the sake of making the helmets look more modern. I wore this one at Bedford Autodrome without the optional spoiler. My top speed was only 132 miles per hour but I found it less stable than the lids with long spoilers. Once you get up to speeds of 160, 170 miles per hour and above that, it will be worth fitting that spoiler, which is supplied with the helmet. The weight is 1,565 grams, that's relatively heavy, but I didn't find it weighty to wear. With a perfect record of 23 five-star reviews from sports bike shop customers, this is the most popular race helmet with owners. The RX7V Evo costs from £700 up to £800. This one isn't FIM approved, so for international racing, you'll need Arai's separate RX7V Evo FIM model. As with all the helmets here, for more info on sizing, approvals, pricing, and more, then look in the description below. Now you'll probably not be surprised to find a showy in a video on the best race helmets and their X SPR Pro doesn't disappoint. This was one of the first race helmets to meet the new ECE 2206 safety standard and I wore one of these in 2022 at Cadwell Park. I found the stability at speed, peripheral vision and the ventilation to all be excellent when I rode a Triumph Speed Triple 1200RR. The visor lowers in a good number of steps and the sliding lock switch for that visor doubles up as a stopper to hold it open in a cracked position which also works very very well. As with all showies, there's the option to swap the interior pad sizes around to get the best fit for you as well. And with this lid, there's even a degree of adjustability through adding extra foam inserts or altering the liner slightly to change the way the helmet sits on your head. This size medium weighed in on our scales at 1,479 grams, which is good in this company, and you get FIM approval to prove it has the top level of protection on track. The XSPR Pro costs from £700 up to £820. You'll find more details on sizing, prices, approvals, and things like that in the description below. The R41 is HJC's top line race helmet and it's been popular with owners so far, taking 10 five-star ratings from the first 11 customer reviews. The R41 is also FIM approved, so you know for sure that you're getting the highest level of track protection. The PIM Plus composite fiber shell gives a respectable weight of 1,529 grams for this size medium, and adding the spoiler that comes in the box takes that weight up to 1,648 grams. If you delve into the customer feedback for this lid, you'll find a lot of positive comments, though fit does seem to be a little bit quirky. Now this is another lid that I tried at Cabell Park in 2022 and the internal shape didn't suit my head which made it uncomfortable for me. Now although the fit didn't suit me, I did find the ventilation to be plentiful and effective, the peripheral vision was good and so was stability at speed. The R41 is a great lid as long as the shape suits your head. Prices range from £650 to £850 and for full details on sizes, approvals and pricing check out the description below where you'll also find a link to our product listing. This is one of the most talked about helmets for years. It's the Alpine Stars Supertech R10, sometimes called the SR10. The shell shape is radical with a dramatic spoiler and side winglets that Alpine Stars say reduces drag by around 5%. Now I won't pretend I could notice that when I wore this at Bedford Autodrome, but the helmet did feel very stable at the speeds that I could manage, which was just over 130 miles per hour. A layer of pure carbon is the outermost of four layers within the shell construction and the lid feels reassuringly protective. It encloses my jaw more than most other helmets, but it still gives a good feeling of freedom of movement. At 1597 grams, it's one of the heavier lids here, but I didn't feel that at all while riding. 
Peripheral vision is very good, but the visor lock release does take some learning and that could be frustrating for road riders who want to lift and lower the visor a lot. Ventilation's excellent too. This helmet's quite breezy inside even without opening the vents, so that might put off some road riders as well. But for track riding, I found the Supertech R10 to be excellent. Prices for this helmet start at £850 and go up to a penny under a grand. The more expensive models come with this long spoiler fitted and a short one in the box and you also get a fancy helmet bag. The £850 road model has a short spoiler fitted and there's no extra spoiler in the box and no posh bag. You'll find more details on sizing, approvals, pricing and things like that in the description below and you'll also find a link to our full review when we're able to get that published. The Shark Aeron GP is too new for customer feedback, but it makes this list as my personal pick. It's derived from the long-serving Race R Pro, and that one saved my head in a big track accident a few years ago, so that's why I've gone for it here. The carbon fiber shell means weight for this helmet is low at 1430 grams, which is especially impressive considering the size of the high-speed aero spoiler. That spoiler's also got hinge sections, which pivot towards the shell in direct airflow. That's not something I noticed on track, but it might be useful on fast track corners, and it might also be useful for lifesaver checks on the road. The ventilation is very good, and the security of the visor mount is very reassuring. Peripheral vision is excellent, especially in the vertical plane, and this is also the most accommodating of all the helmets here for my glasses. Something else to bear in mind though, there's no FIM approval, so you'll need a Race R Pro GP FIM if you want a shark for international racing. The Aeron GP is £950 in all colours, and you'll find full details on sizing and approvals in the description below, along with a link to the product listing. Okay, so there are our top five picks for racing and for track helmets. As I said at the start, these aren't exclusively for race or track use and all of these helmets have the relevant road going safety approvals as well. And also you don't have to go all in for a helmet at this level if you're doing track days or you're starting racing. It's just that these are the dedicated racing models. There are plenty of other helmets that will be absolutely fine for track riding or racing as long as they've got that ACU gold sticker which is compulsory for use on tracks. Now, as someone who's had a few high-speed track accidents over the years and can still kind of string a coherent sentence together, I'd say it's worth having a higher standard of protection when you're riding on track. I'd suggest going for helmets that meet the latest ECE2206 safety standard if you can. The tests in that new standard are more relevant for the sort of impacts that you can suffer on a racetrack. If you're going for a helmet that meets the older ECE2205 standard, then I would look for one that's rated to either four or five stars in the UK government's sharp testing scheme. Like 2206, those tests include higher speed impacts as well. We've got a video coming out soon on the best sports helmets, and all of those helmets would also make very good track lids if you can't splash out for one of these or you don't want to splash out for one of these. If that video is up by the time you watch this, then you'll see the link popping up on screen now and in the description below. Now, I hope this run through has helped you narrow down your selection. But as ever, if you have anything you'd like to ask or you've got your own experience to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.